PC gamers have a ton to look forward to this year. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Rigs, the top 30 PC games coming in 2020. Just as a quick disclaimer, no, we're not going to talk about the new Baldur's Gate or the new Elder Scrolls because it's very unlikely we'll be seeing those this year. So without further ado. At number 30 is Microsoft Flight Simulator, the first in a while. The last one we saw was back in 2014. This one will be leveraging Bing Maps data in order to be creating a incredibly accurate version of the world with photorealistic 3D models that are created with photogrammetry. Basically for me, it's everything you could ask for with a new Microsoft Flight Simulator. It looks like it's shaking up to be an accurate sim with incredible graphics. It doesn't have a release date, but it is coming to PC and Xbox One sometime this year. At number 29 is the Destroy All Humans remake, which I'm personally very excited for. Destroy All Humans is one of my favorite games of the last 20 years, to be frank. And it's also great, they're using all of the original voice acting, but completely new graphics. And it looks phenomenal. It looks exactly like you would want it to look. I don't know if you've ever played this game, but it's such a warped, goofy game that came out during a time when double A games, the kind of mid-tier games, were much more frequent and a lot more experimental. It's a game where you're essentially stealing DNA from humans to save your race. It's an outright silly concept, and the game itself is even sillier. I love it. I can't wait to play it again. It's hitting PC, as well as all the consoles, sometime either quarter one or quarter two. And number 28 is Fantasy Star Online 2, a game that, frankly, we really never thought we'd see. In Japan, they've been playing this game since 2012. Frankly, they're even playing it on Nintendo Switch as we speak. But we will be seeing this follow-up to what is, frankly, one of the greatest MMORPGs of all time. It's free to play, and it's something I'm excited to be doing on a totally official basis. I'll say it was probably a little bit more innovative back in 2012, but that doesn't mean it isn't just full of beauty and character and really fun to do anything in, frankly. It's a great game, which we'll be able to officially play now in English. It's coming to Microsoft Windows as well as Xbox One in the spring or possibly early summer. We look forward to it. At number 27 is Wasteland 3, an upcoming RPG which was developed by In Exile Entertainment. It's a squad-based RPG with turn-based combat, and if you're unfamiliar with Wasteland, it's basically the series that inspired Fallout. Some of the original Wasteland developers worked on the original Fallout. Honestly, this is probably going to be good. It's kind of an old-school Fallout-looking game. I'm ready for that. It's hitting May 19th. At number 26 is Empire of Sin, a strategy game which is coming to us via Romero Games. You play a Chicago mobster, loosely based on real people during the Prohibition era. And in my opinion, that setup just sounds really interesting for a turn-based strategy game. And the combat in it is being described as XCOM-like. Honestly, that's a great idea. Whoever thought, let's do a turn-based strategy mobster game? I mean, seriously, that was a great idea. I cannot wait to play this. It's coming to pretty much all platforms. Obviously, we're talking about PC here sometime in quarter two of this year. At number 25 is Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, which really looks to up the ante about every aspect of the game. I mean, we've really only seen an in-engine trailer that gave us some astounding looks at the kinds of rendering and animation we'll be seeing. We can only make the assumption that gameplay will be similar, although I have a feeling that the world itself will be significantly larger. The trailer we've been seeing looked like her hyping up a bunch of people to go to war. I'm personally really excited about this. I love the original Hellblade. I'm excited for this. It may launch with the new action. Xbox, but it is definitely coming to PC. And number 24 is Overwatch 2, which is a non-standard sequel. It's kind of a big expansion to Overwatch, but more interestingly speaking, it's got a story now. And fortunately, all existing cosmetics you have will carry over to the sequel. And if you're not intending on getting the sequel, you can still play Overwatch 1 with the Overwatch 2 people. It's receiving all the same PvP updates and other updates as well, although I don't know if it will receive the same graphical updates. Either way, it's really exciting, and it's cool to see them embrace a model that isn't necessarily completely outdating the original. Overwatch 2 is coming to all platforms, but particularly we're talking about PC today. Sometime this year, we don't have an exact date, but I mean, it was in pretty good shape back in November, so it probably won't be too long. We'll see if they're waiting to launch alongside the new consoles or not, probably sometime soon. And number 23 is LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, which is, yes, the complete saga as a LEGO Star Wars. All the humor, all the fun, all the frankly enjoyable gameplay of LEGO Star Wars spanning the entire nine movie saga, which is really exciting. It's kind of the culmination of the LEGO Star Wars series, obviously. It's coming to everything, including Microsoft Windows sometime this year. 
At 22, it's Tales of Arise, the latest in the Tales series, of course, a series of JRPGs, action RPGs to be specific, which will be bringing some developments to the battle system, as well as other elements of the game, as it was more or less an initiative to sort of evolve the series. It's a beautiful looking game too, using the Unreal Engine, and really just looking interesting to play. I'm super excited for it, I'll be checking it out, can't wait for more information on it. It's hitting pretty much all platforms, obviously PC, at some point this year. At number 21 is Gods and Monsters, a very clearly Breath of the Wild influenced game coming to us from Ubisoft, specifically the creators of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which again makes sense, the Greek thing. It is very Greek oriented, but again, looks very much like the new Zelda. Understanding these two aspects, I would say, like, if you could combine Breath of the Wild with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, that's probably what you're dealing with here. And as far as I'm concerned, that sounds wonderful. We don't have a date for it, but it is coming sometime this year. It's a must play as far as I'm concerned. At number 20 is Outriders, a new co-op shooter from the developers of Gears of War Judgment and Bulletstorm. It's a three-player game, so obviously it bears some similarities to Gears right off. This game has been kept kind of mysterious because it's... It's basically fully sci-fi, very apocalyptic, and I think it's gonna be really cool. We don't have an exact date, but Outriders is going to release in September. At number 19 is Total War Saga Troy, which is of course a Total War game set in Troy. It's interesting because they seem to be trying to merge a historical account of a Battle of Troy along with a sort of mythical one. There will be monsters, for instance, minotaurs, etc. So it feels like the lines are kind of blurry there, possibly to good effect. We don't have a specific date, but we will be seeing this game sometime this year. At number 18 is Death Stranding, a wholly unique game that came out on the PlayStation 4 last year in November. It is hitting the PC this year, and it's just a game that basically defies explanation, and yet, when you play it, seems familiar and even nostalgic in some weird ways. It's very much a Kojima game. I love it. It's definitely not necessarily for everyone, but an experience that I truly enjoy. Death Stranding is hitting PC in quarter two or quarter three of this year. Number 17 is Kerbal Space Program 2, which is being developed by a different developer. On the other hand, one that seems to really revel in the idea that they get to work on this. There are a lot of ambitious upgrades that we've heard about, particularly to building, and I'm kind of interested to see the actual result of that. Kerbal is just a really goofy, but really entertaining and engaging game. And with a different developer, without it being ambitious, it would just feel like a rehash. So in my opinion, that really sounds like the right path. This game is supposed to happen sometime after April, but we don't know exactly when that is. It could even be next Next year. We're hoping it's not. At number 16 is Torchlight 3, a hack and slash action RPG that follows Torchlight Frontiers, which was a massively multiplayer online game, as was this intended to be. However, they grounded Torchlight 3 in a more linear approach, so we'll end up seeing what exactly kinds of changes that they made. In a lot of respects, it kind of seems as though it's going to be a upgrade of Torchlight 2, which is good. Torchlight 2 is great. We don't have a date for it. It's coming sometime this year. I mean, Torchlight rules. It's fun. I can't wait to play this. At number 15 is Crusader Kings 3, a 4x grand strategy game set in the Middle Ages. Essentially, you could look at this type of game as a dynasty simulator, and if that has you interested, I would highly recommend playing one of the previous games before this one. They're pretty in-depth, pretty detailed, and really fun. Crusader Kings 3 is hitting Windows sometime this year. At number 14 is Godfall, which is something that's pretty different looking coming to us from Counterplay by way of Gearbox. It's a high fantasy action RPG where we've got different realms based on different elements. In some ways, the idea of this is very intriguing. On account, it's very much like a looter shooter. However, it's fully melee oriented. They're calling it a looter slasher. This is something I'm personally pretty interested in. I think it could work very well. I don't love the whole anthem drop in, drop out co-op style, but we'll see. Honestly, the concept is interesting enough that it's worth checking out. That's hitting sometime late 2020, probably around when the new consoles come out because it's coming out on PlayStation 5 as well, but it's definitely worth a closer look, I think. Number 13 is Marvel's Avengers, which looks very much as though it is this kind of action extravaganza, which we've seen some pretty interesting full-blown action on. We've got kind of Spider-Man looking combat with a lot of QTE stuff. In some ways, honestly, it kind of just depends on how it shakes out because it looks cool. We'll see though. It's hitting all platforms, including PC on September 4th. And number 12 is Diablo 4, a game that we've been faked out at some point about. And it's exciting on account they'll be allowing you to customize your character a lot more than previous games. And of course, your normal customization trees will come into play. Now, we don't have a ton of information. We know that it's coming to pretty much every platform, including Windows, of course. But we know that there is a chance it will come this year. We'll probably know more about that in June with E3. But until then, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. 
At number 11 is the Resident Evil 3 remake, which I don't know how you couldn't be excited for. It's basically getting the same treatment as Resident Evil 2, because Resident Evil 3 is innately related to Resident Evil 2, some of it taking place before, some of it taking place after the events of Resident Evil 2. It looks very much like a continuation of what was done with the previous remake, which is great, because the work they did for the Resident Evil 2 remake elevated that game to a level that just, it deserved it. It was a fantastic game, and technology and expectations have changed. That's perfect for Resident Evil 3, too. It's hitting on April 3rd, I'll be playing it. At number 10 is Halo Infinite. They've been developing this game since 2015, apparently, and everything we've seen of it really looks amazing. The game's built in a new engine called Slipspace, which they're pretty proud of, they've been talking about pretty often, and it's led to some speculation of various things. For instance, A, that the game is going to be open world, although it takes place on a Halo ring, so open world doesn't exactly mean open world. There's also a lot of speculation there may be a grappling hook in this game, which would not bother me in the least. I love grappling hook gameplay when it's done well. Halo Infinite is coming at some point this year, we don't know exactly when, but I'd guess it will coincide with the release of the new Xbox. At number 9, we've got Dying Light 2, which let's just go ahead and say we don't know exactly when it is coming out, but we do know that there's a lot more deep story-oriented elements that are blended into the mechanics of this game. That's probably the reason they've delayed it. However, it's still supposedly possible it's going to come out this year, and if you enjoyed the original Dying Light, that's a really good piece of news. There's apparently double the parkour, paragliders, grappling hooks, stuff that I'm just ready to play, and we have to wait. Still supposedly this year, though. Number 8 is Elden Ring, the collaboration between George R.R. R. Martin and From Software. This is an open-world Dark Souls game, basically, and that's a very interesting prospect on account. While pretty open, they tend to be fairly linear games. This is, in some ways, kind of, I think, a test to see exactly how workable that is, and I can't figure out a better way to have done something like that than collaborating with George R.R. R. Martin. We don't have a date for this, it's supposedly coming this year. I don't know why you wouldn't be excited about this as a fan of either George R.R. R. Martin or Dark Souls. I certainly am. At number 7, it's Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, which is an action RPG where you create a vampire character, select a background, and go out and do vampire stuff. You need blood, you have to feed on people, and it takes place in Seattle during Christmas. Let's just go ahead and say this kind of sounds pretty awesome. The original really didn't do well, not necessarily critically speaking, but commercially, so to see this happen is awesome. We don't have an exact date, but it's coming this year sometime. And number six is Watch Dogs Legion, which is basically Watch Dogs set in a future where Brexit has turned Britain into a police state. Honestly, that sounds like a really good idea for a setting, and considering how much better Watch Dogs 2 is than Watch Dogs 1, I'm quite excited to see it. We don't have a date, but it is coming sometime this year. I'm looking forward. And number five is Rainbow Six Quarantine, which in a lot of ways gives the vibes of a more sci-fi oriented game. It has to do with an alien parasite, and it looks like a co-op experience in which you basically have to fight your way out of various parasite sites. To me, it sounds a lot like Rainbow Six Siege plus aliens. Maybe with three-person squads, maybe with more, I don't know exactly, but it looks cool. It's supposedly gonna hit sometime in quarter one or quarter two of this year. I would expect more news on that very soon for that to be the truth. We'll see. At number four is Doom Eternal. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty darn excited for the follow-up to the 2016 reboot of Doom, which, well, it's not exactly the same thing as the old school Doom. It's certainly a really good game that captures a lot of the great elements of the originals bringing in a couple of new elements, and of course, this sequel looks to be doing the exact same thing. I've got two words for you that I am particularly excited about, and those words are specifically grappling hook shotgun. Oh yes, you know I'm here for grappling hook mechanics. There's a ton of new features that I'm really excited for with this version of Doom, to say the absolute very least. It's coming to all platforms, but it's hitting PC sometime this year. We're excited. At number three is Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord, an action RPG in which a lot of ideas seem to have been upgraded. For instance, sieges are intended to be more on the strategy element of things. There's factions, there's multiplayer. If you liked the previous Mount and Blade, it looks like it's gonna be great. Speaking of looks, graphically, it's a huge upgrade from the previous game, which came out in 2008. I'm excited to play it. I enjoyed this game way back when. It's hitting early access in March. And number two is Cyberpunk 2077, and let's just go ahead and say, this game looks like it's trying to be everything and might actually kind of deliver. We're talking destructible environments, driving, shooting, stuff that just looks good. Like, it looks like a step above a lot of other things, and on top of that, it looks like a Witcher-type RPG. It's hard to actually say the kinds of expectations that I have going into this game for how deep it will be and how engaging it will be, but I kind of think they're going to be met. It's looking good. Cyberpunk 2077 is hitting on September 17th. 
And finally, at number one, we have Half-Life Alex, a VR FPS, which will function as a prequel to Half-Life 2. Now, we don't have a lot more info besides that. We've seen some gameplay. It does look very intriguing. There are some elements that seem genuinely interesting that are VR incorporated, and this could be the thing that finally sort of legitimizes VR. It's a full game, supposedly over 30 hours, and I'm excited for it. I, I look forward to playing it. That's hitting in March. A couple of bonus games for you are Trials of Mana, which is essentially a remake of an old Super Nintendo game that I'm excited to play personally. I loved the old game. I'd love to see how they've changed it, what they've left. That's hitting April 24th. Hollow Knight Silk Song, which is a Metroidvania action adventure, and a sequel to Hollow Knight, which was a very cool game. This looking much more expansive and broad and pretty, for that matter. Ori and the Will of the Wisps, another game along those same lines, a sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest, which was a phenomenal game in its own right. This looks to expand the concept much further than the forest, giving us a lot more variety in terrain. Disintegration, a game set in the supposed near future of a sci-fi apocalypse, setting you in PvP multiplayer against other pilots and crews as you're obviously attempting to survive in an awful, awful, awful situation. That's coming sometime this year. Next is Odd World Soulstorm, a reimagining of Abe's Exodus. Frankly, it looks great. Looks like we retain the types of gameplay that the original had. Carry On, which is a game that I'm so excited for. A reverse horror game where you play as an amorphous creature absorbing everything around you, which is hitting sometime this year. And finally, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, which is a new Medal of Honor game. It's a VR game, and it might be great, it might not be, I have no idea at this point. But I am excited to see Medal of Honor make a comeback. That's all for today. We got a lot coming this year. What are you excited for? Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do exactly that. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe, and don't forget to enable all notifications. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconHero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.